Namo Narayana, and welcome back to our reading of the Ramayana. We are in chapter 31 today. Just chapter 31, because it's a little longer, and, you know, I, I do like to keep these things a little on the shorter side, just so they're easier to digest. Chapter 31 is called Ravana Informed About Kara's Death. Speedily leaving Janasthana, a Kampana entered Lanka and with great haste spoke to Ravana. My king, many Rakshasas living in Janasthana have been killed. Kara also has been killed in the war, and I have escaped and come here. Hearing that, the ten-headed one with red eyes, to the great anger, looked as if he would burn others, asked, O oh, Akampana, who has destroyed the very pretty Janasthana? Who has chosen the option of not returning back to the world? Anyone who displeases me cannot live happily, whether it is Indra, Kubera, Yama, or even Vishnu. I am the god of death to the god of death. I can burn fire. I wish to associate death along with death according to Dharma. If I get angry, I can burn even the sun and the fire by my great luster. I am interested in stopping the speed of wind also. Akampana saluted the very angry Ravana, and in a voice shivering with fear, begged protection from him. The ten-headed one, who was a great Rakshasa, promised protection to him, and that grateful one, using clear words, said, uh, Rama, the son of Dasartha, is a lad whose body is built like a lion. He has round and strong arms and a shoulder like a bull. He is a hero of great fame who is credited with matchless valor, and he has destroyed Chanasthana along with Kara and Dushana. After hearing this from Akapana, that Ravana, who is the king of the Rakshasas, breathed like the king of serpents and said, did that Rama come to Janasthana, along with Indra and other devas? Please tell me, Akampana. Hearing this reply of Ravana, that Akampana started telling about the strength and valor of that great Rama. His name is Rama. He is greatly lustrous, and the greatest among those who would wield the bow, and he has many auspicious arrows, and is equal to Indra. Lakshmana is his younger brother, who has great strength, bright red eyes, a voice like a drum, and a face like a moon. He has a similar appearance to Rama. With his company, they are like wind and fire, and he is a great king, and it is due to him that Janasthana fell from its glory. They are not gods, but they are great people, and there is no need to investigate it. The golden flagged arrows released by Rama turned into five hooded serpents and killed all the Rakshasas. Those scared Rakshasas, from whichever place they went, they saw only Rama standing in their front, and this way he destroyed Janasthana like fire. Hearing the words of Akampana, Ravana said, I will go to Janasthana and kill Rama and Lakshmana. When these words were spoken, Akampana replied, O oh, king, hear from me in detail about the strength and valor of Rama. Please listen. Rama gets unbearable anger, and he is greatly famous for his valor. He can easily stop the speed of the flow of water using his arrows. That Rama can easily destroy all the planets and the stars in the sky, and if he gets angry, he can lift the drowning earth from the sea. That great lord can break the boundary of the ocean and can drown all the worlds in it, and he can arrest the speed of the sea wind using his arrows. That very famous one who is a tiger among men can destroy the world by his valor and also recreate the world. O oh, great ten-headed one, you cannot win over Rama in a battle along with all the Rakshasas, just like a sinner cannot hope to enter heaven. I... Do not think that all devas and asuras together can kill him. But there is a way to kill him, and please hear it with single-pointed attention. His wife is the prettiest Sita, who is black with well-formed limbs and a very thin middle. She is a gem among women and decorates herself with gems. There is no equal to that pretty woman among devas, asuras, and gandavaras, and, and what to tell among the mere human beings. You go and steal the woman who is his wife in that great forest, and being passionately in love with her, 
Rama will give up his wife. Ravana, the king of the Rakshasas, liked these words, and that very strong one started thinking about what Akampana had told him. Very good. With a charioteer, early morning, I would go alone, and will get that happy woman into this great town. After telling this, Ravana got in a chariot drawn by donkeys with the color of the sun and illuminating in all directions, and commenced his journey. When the chariot of the king of the Rakshasas was going through the way of the stars, it lighted the stars just like the moon does. He reached the hermitage of Maricha and met the son of Thaktaka. Maricha worshipped that king with different types of food which can be eaten or chewed. Maricha personally worshipped him and offered him a seat and water, and in a meaningful manner, using suitable words, Maricha said, How about your welfare, O king of the world, O god of Rakshasas? Your coming here so quickly creates doubts in my mind. When Maricha spoke this way, Ravana, that king with great luster, who was an expert in speech, said, I feel unprotected because Rama capable of doing very difficult jobs, has killed all those of Janasthana who cannot be killed, and I need your help as a minister to steal his wife. Maricha, having heard the words of the king, said, Oh, the one who told you about this is your enemy in the form of a friend, being pleased by you who will not enjoy your company. Please tell me, who told you to bring Sita here? They want a cut of the crown of the world of Rakshasas. Without doubt, he who encouraged you in this is your enemy. He desires you to pluck the poisonous fangs from the mouth of the serpent. By whose act or word have you been led on this wrong path? O oh, king, who has hit you on your forehead while you were having a sound sleep? Oh, great one, it would not be proper to raise an eye to see Rama in war, who will then be like a majestic elephant that has an impeccable dynasty and bloodline like its mammoth trunk, and personal radiance as its indomitable might, and a very firm pair of arms as its perniculous toss, more so, who will be with the redolence of the impressionable lineage of the Rakavas? No, no, it is not proper for you to wake up that sleeping Rama, who is a man in the form of a lion, who is a lion with its tail touching its waist in great anger, the killer of deer in front of Lern Rakshasas, and who stores sharp arrows all over his body like sharp-edged fangs. His bow is a crocodile, his shoulders are swamps, arrows are giant tides, and battle with him is like the mouth of hell, and it is not proper to jump into it, great king. O oh, god of Lanka, O oh, king of Rakshasas, please know that it is not proper for you to go back to Lanka and enjoy your days with your wives, and let the wife of Rama enjoy the forest. When Maricha told like this to the ten-headed Ravana, he returned back to Lanka, and entered in to the best of his homes. Thus ends chapter 31, and we're, we're really getting Ravana now more involved, classic bad guy. Um, my apologies, uh, at one point I kind of forgot what voice I was using, so if something changed, uh, hopefully it wasn't too jarring. <laughs> Sometimes I forget what I'm doing. Um, anyways...